Hey. I'm Renard. I'm one of the two game designers working on the Clan Wars, the Genesis. I'm more uh, focused toward uh, the game engine, while uh, Liam is uh, writing the creative story, uh, the campaign, and things like that. <laughs> Dark Little Guilty Punishing. It's uh, one of the tenets of the game. It's uh, one of the few things we wanted absolutely in the game, a must have. So we wanted to convey the, the mood of the RPG, the Genesis, which is very little, very gritty, very punishing and dark. There was easy to learn, hard to master. We wanted the onboarding to last no more than half an hour and the game uh, to uh, offer uh, a long uh, learning curve for the players to be better over time. Story driven mechanics. Uh, so we wanted to make the players play a story and not just a uh, uh, an e-sport uh, for board games, so uh, <laughs> they, are, they are playing along a campaign which is uh, driven by the story. There are two types of players. There's, there's the operatives, which play cooperatively toward the goal, and uh, in front of them there is the hostile, which is the overlord uh, commanding a vast array of troops against them. They are opponents. Either the hostile will win or the operatives will win. Uh, over the course of the campaign. There are two kinds of differences. Uh, first, the uh, characters are represented on the board by one operative. So they play one character and uh, they are all different, obviously, but they, they can focus on their actions for their model. Whereas, on the other hand, the hostile is commanding swarms of enemy who have no names, they are disponible, they can die, it's no problem. He has a lot uh, coming, uh, coming in. I'd rather playing the operatives because uh, I have an easier time uh, focusing on one model and uh, the array of uh, strategic options he has in hand. Mm -hmm. The uh, style is very demanding uh, intellectually. <laughs> it's a strategic uh, way of playing, whereas when you play the operatives, you have a tactical way of playing. It's complicated because there is 25 different operatives. They are all different. Uh, some of them have synergies uh, between uh, with um, other operatives. But I think overall, the one I prefer is the Mildred. Uh, she's pretty for one, and <laughs> she's uh, playing with um, the tarot card. Uh, she's oriented toward this aspect of the game. She is uh, she's uh, changing the fate and destiny of the players. Uh, before we started de designing a game, we bought a lot of games to test them. And uh, in the end, we, <laughs> we ended up playing only one game, Descent. So the few things we really uh, took from a game from the beginning are from Descent, uh, especially the flipping system. We liked uh, the fact that uh, every game element could be flipped with other options. So we incorporated it in uh, our game. I uh, took some things from uh, Alien, the RPG. I like the stress system from the dice roll, and uh, we uh, translated it with the botches in our game. And there is a, a little bit of DND because the opportunity attack from DND are very interesting, and we uh, we use them as uh, sucker punches in Clan Wars. Flipping something is very elegant because uh, there is uh, the gesture, there is a movement of the player. It means something, you are actually doing something on the game. And uh, it allows us to have twice the amount of game mechanics for only one game element. So you have one data sheet, but in fact, it's two data sheets. Uh, for the operatives, it means that they have two, way, two ways of playing their, uh, their character. One that is focus, meaning uh, it's intellectual, they can do uh, rational things, and one that is primal, more savage, more instinctive. For the gear, we have the working side of the gear and the down side of the gear when it is broken or out of ammunition. And for the potentials, which are the skills of the operatives, when they are flipped, it's the flesh wounds, it's the hit point system. I think the mechanic I am the most proud of uh, came very early in the design of the game. It's the potentials, which are the skills 
the operatives will win over the course of the campaign. Uh, it's a card. On the one side, there is the, the skill, the new skill they, they earned. And on the other side, it's a flesh wound. Meaning, when they are wounded by the hostile or something else, they flip one of their skills, one of their potentials, and it becomes a flesh wound. It's, uh, and since they can win other during the course of the campaign, it's also experience points. So one game element is hit points, skills, and experience. It's very elegant and it's what I'm the most uh, proud of. I think the game mechanics that affects the pace of the game the most is the action economy. Uh, at the start of a round, the hostile will hunt out tokens to every operative, one per operative, and they will use these tokens to take a turn in the order they want. Each time they do it, they give back the token to the hostile. The hostile can store any amount, uh, specific amount of tokens, and he can take consecutive turns with these tokens at the end of each operative turn. Meaning, you don't know when you end your turn if the hostile will take one turn, two turn, three turn, four turn if there is four operatives. Meaning, there is no done, uh, done time. You're always looking out for a reaction from the hostile. And the side always have to be attentive to what the players are doing because he can react at the end of their turn. It was a will from us to have uh, something very fast paced and uh, without downtime. Another example is that there is no turn order between the operatives. They choose every time in which order they will play because it's very important to uh, activate some skills at the start of the round and they, uh, they can change their mind at the end of each turn. Oh, it become uh, very real now because uh, we uh, we have an, an actual physical game we can play with. People are very happy when they are they are playing it. So it feels like uh, having really done something. It's not intellectual any, anymore. It's a game, and uh, we are very eager to see it uh, played by a lot of people. Spreadsheets in front of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a problem. But since I learned to lock my spreadsheet. Not allowing people to mess with them, uh, life became very easier for me because uh, when you are doing math and uh, very logical sentences with the bad English I am not proud of, uh, people will have to translate the sentences in good English. But sometimes they don't understand that one word can mean uh, a word for the sentence. So now I lock everything, I review every modification and uh, I control the game mechanics like this. Um, the tile design uh, was complicated because I was not uh, uh, responsible for this at first. And at some point, we needed something very rational for the game because we have a lot of uh, missions in the game and we cannot have one map per mission. So we need modular elements working in a lot of ways, a lot of different ways, very uh, with a big versatility, a big modularity and keeping keeping a personality. So we had to make very uh, unique maps with very few elements. So I designed very uh, simple uh, mock-up of the maps with big triangles, and I kept the border of the maps, the tiles, very simple, and the inside very complicated. This way, we had very unique uh, maps, but very compatible. No is an answer. <laughs> you got it right first time. You know that uh, it was perfect. It didn't feel very complicated for me because uh, I have a very mathematical mind. So uh, uh, since I, uh, when I have the thing on my spreadsheet, I know it works. Uh, what was complicated? It was keeping uh, the same language over the whole course of the game because there is a lot of game elements, and uh, I wanted to keep uh, a way of speaking to the player a way of explaining the rules, a way of uh, sequencing every game mechanic. So uh, that was complicated mm -hmm. because every time we made a modification, we had to keep in mind that uh, it impacted the whole language of the game. The beta tests were very helpful for this because our uh, test players are very imaginative. So they came with uh, very strange ways of using the gear and uh, it uh, showed us where there was a, a problem. For example, 
there is a, a character who is able to fix your gear, but fixing in this game is flipping an item from his down side to his good side. And uh, some of these items are on this on their downside because they are not uh, they have not ammo anymore. So it was complicated because uh, fixing is not replenishing a weapon. And uh, we changed the keywords uh, to uh, repair this mm -hmm. after one. And now it's uh, bulletproof. I hope so. <laughs> Taut is a very important part of the game for us because it's um, an in-game element and an out-game element. It exists in the setting of the Genesis. It's the apocalyptic Taut and uh, this cult is able to foresee the future with it, uh, like no other. And uh, we wanted uh, to use it as a game element, a game mechanic. So we made it very powerful. It's a deck of action cards that can interrupt almost everything in the game. And it's also a currency for some game mechanics. For example, when you want to overcome it, make your roll more powerful, you can add a die to your dice pool. But in exchange, you will give an arcana to the opponent. And you know the arcana will be powerful. It's random, but they are all very good. So you, you have a choice to make, and this choice is impactful. The game is dark, gritty, and punishing. Some, some roll will be very important. You know the mission will rely on this role. You cannot fail. So we, you will want to uh, to get the maximum bonus you can. Uh, but it's very dangerous too because all the dice have uh, botches, but the black and the fatal dice have botches. So the more you add dice, the more you are, you have chances to, to botch the role. It's a critical failure. Botching uh, on the three type of dice, there is a different number of successes and a different number of botches. On the white dice, which are very weak, there are no botches. Meaning you can throw any number of white dice, it's not a problem, you will never botch. But maybe you won't succeed either because they are very weak. Uh, black dice are better, but there is one botch face. And fatal dice are even better, the red one, but there is two botches. Uh, you only need one botch on a roll to fail the whole thing. So it's very important to just be uh, very uh, parsimonious with uh, which dice you add to your roll because, uh, okay, you will have more successes, but you have a chance to just fail. And failure uh, with a botch can mean uh, critical uh, consequences for your game because it will flip, for example, your gear. And if the gear is a knife, it's not very serious, but if it's explosives, <laughs> can mean a lot of things. The most useful skill in the game, according to me, is the Secure X role. Uh, it's a skill uh, some characters have, some operatives, or some gear can provide to you. And Secure X means you ignore X botches on the role, depending on certain circumstances. Uh, it's very powerful. Mm. The onboarding is uh, simple. My advice for new players is not to care a lot about the mechanics first, to uh, delve into the game, the lore, the story, because it's the most important, it's the experience and the emotion you, uh, you will feel uh, during the game. So go for it. You will fail maybe, but it's not very, <laughs> it's not a problem. You can uh, play again. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you.